P-O-S-T! P-O-S-T, Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, I hope you're enjoying those good post cereals. I asked you to try them as a favor to me, remember? The reason I ask is because I know anything bearing the brand name Post is good. Well, this is a big day in Paradise Valley. Doug Manson's trial is over, and the judge is supposed to sentence him. Almost everybody's in court. I guess even Dale and Jonah. <laughs> All these strange men crowding into the courtroom, Jonah. They look like gunslingers. Yeah, they look worse than that. They look like drill sergeants with indigestion, of which there is nothing worse. Yeah, but these armors are really bad, Jonah. Yeah, now, now you take our old drill sergeant. He was crazy about spare ribs. I say he's crazy about spare ribs. Mm -hmm. Didn't care for the meat, just the bones. And he used to have the doggondest cases of indigestion. Quiet. He said... Quiet. Here's the judge. Hmm. He sure is eyeing the crowd in an unfriendly way. All right, this is the time, men. Move in. Let's suck Doug free. They're Doug Manson's men, Jonah. They're here to take him away from the law. Well, Doug, how'd we do? Sure took you out of court, didn't we? Boys, I never will forget the look on the judge's face when the gun started barking and he ducked behind his desk. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing is to get you out of this territory. What's the hurry, Nicholas? I like it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe so. But the law doesn't like you. If you want to stay free, you'll have to leave pronto. Nicholas, you other boys too, listen to me. I'm not riding out of this territory until we take care of every witness who testified against me. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, what's your idea? I'm going to fix it so that if the law ever gets me again, the case they've built up this time will be gone. No, Doug, don't take the chance. What I say here goes, Nicholas. We're taking care of every witness who stood up there on the stand while I was being tried. We're starting with Double E Norris. Just the two of us, you, Nicholas, and me, we're riding out and taking care of Norris tonight. <laughs> Answer when somebody knocks, Norris. You, Doug. You tipped off the sheriff about me, Norris. You testified against me at the trial. Now you're going to get yours. Hurry it up, Doug. That's the way to take care of witnesses. We'll get the others the same way. Come on, we're leaving. The next two hours are an awful agony for E.E. E. Norris. Wounded, he staggers through the night using every ounce of nerve and strength that remains in him. Two hours to travel a mile and a half. Finally, he arrives in Mineral City. Roy Rogers, walking toward the hitching rail, after attending a rancher's meeting, sees Norris. Roy goes to him, notices the wound, picks him up, and heads for the Eureka Hotel. Dale, Jonah, I need some help here. Roy! Well, convolutions. What you got there, Roy? It's double E. Norris, Jonah. Hmm. Carrying him like he was a baby. Doug Manson got him. Dale, is there a room vacant on the first floor? You bet there is, Roy. Roy, wait. What is it, D.E.? Uh, after the three shots, Doug and the other man stood there looking down at me. I heard Doug say he was going to kill every person who witnessed against him at the trial. This is bad. Yeah, it's worse than bad. It plumb ain't legal. Dale, Jonah... We'd better see that everyone connected with the trial is rounded up and put under heavy guard until we can bring Doug in again. Well, he can be brought here to the hotel if the sheriff approves. No, I think I know a better place. There's an old stagecoach station out at the Double R Bar Ranch. It's sitting right in the middle of a piece of flat ground. We can spot anybody coming from any way. 
All right. You make the arrangements. I'll go get the doctor for Mr. Norris. Okay, Dale. Say, say, I got an idea how to lure Doug Manson into a trap. What's that, Jonah? Why, well, the girl that Doug is so crazy about, Marie Dale. Now, if we throwed her in jail, I say, if we throwed her in jail, Doug would be sure to ride in and try to set her free. Say, I think you've got something there, Jonah. Mm. We'll get the sheriff to go pick up Marie Dale while we find the witnesses. I've got a hunch Doug Manson won't be free very long this time. News of what is being done reaches Doug Manson and his gang in their hideout at Five Oaks. Doug welcomes the news. <laughs> They're fools, complete fools. But they've stopped us, Doug. Those witnesses will be guarded by half the men in the territory. Yeah, that's right. Yes, what about Marie? They've got your Marie in jail. So for once, I don't have to worry about what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, but look, Doug. They've given us just what we need. And we're out of cash and food. This is our chance to get both. Yeah, right, Doug. Right. Now, that cattle buyer, Don Williams, usually keeps a lot of money at his office. We'll take it. And Bill... During the robbery, you get yourself captured. What? Captured? After they hold you a while, break down and tell them our headquarters is at the old Weber Ranch. They'll form a posse and ride off in that direction. While they're gone, we'll raid the jail, take Marie, and then get rid of the witnesses. Yeah, but what about me? You'll be in jail too, won't you? Yeah, but... We'll set you free when we come for Marie. At nine o'clock in the morning, Doug Manson and his men ride to the outskirts of Mineral City. This hour, and with so many ranchers and townsmen guarding the witnesses, the street is almost deserted. The gang stops in front of Don Wallace's office. The men dismount. Several, with Manson in the lead, start for the doorway. The holdup is in progress. I got it. I got the money. Let's ride. Bill Palmer is preparing to be captured. He stumbles, falls. Jonah Wilde, coming across the street, sees Palmer, runs toward him, gun in hand. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I surrender! Stand up here! Put your hands over your head! Hey, oh, sheriff! Where's your sheriff? I got me one of Doug Manson's gang. No, oh, Roy, come on! I got an outlaw! What do I do now? Hold him, Jonah! I'll help you. Oh, if only General Thomas Kenneth Rowe could see me now. Nice going, Jonah. This will help a lot in tracking down Manson and the rest of the gang. Don't let that mob get me. Take me to jail. You help us, and we'll help you. Sure, sure. I'll do anything I can. Only take me to jail. I don't want a mob getting me. Where are Manson and the gang hiding out? The old Weber Ranch, north of here. We use the Weber Ranch as headquarters. I didn't even have a saber. Nothing but a gun. Jonah, let's get this rattle over to the lockup. You bet you. The sheriff will want to organize a posse and start for Weber Ranch right away. saying that Roy's going soft, Dale, but all he's doing is just sitting there in the sheriff's office. Well, I'll talk to him, Jonah. Yeah, shucks. The least we could do is try to catch up with the sheriff's posse. You've certainly been working, though, capturing Bill Palmer and then that other thing, suggesting that Marie Dell be put in jail as bait for Manson. Oh, sure, that. Why, I took that from the Battle of Coyote Hill. You know, General Rowe refused to fight that battle. Mm -hmm. Said he's tired of fighting until Corporal Dumphy told him that we'd sneak behind the enemy lines and met up with a gal who was crazy to meet the general. That did it, I suppose. Why, say, you ought to seen the general go. Say, you ought to seen him go. Of course, he was awful put out after the battle, but the only girl he found was Slick Top Sue. <laughs> he threatened to court-martial Corporal Dumphy and me. Wait a minute. Slick Top Sue? Uh, yeah, well, that wasn't her real name. It, it just happened that... One time, she stood too near the fire to dry her hair, and after that, everybody called her Slick Top Sue. Oh. But about Roy now... We'll find out he... what's the matter with Roy. Yeah. Well, howdy, Dale. Roy, I've had a complaint about you. That's so? Yes. Why are you sitting here miles away from the excitement doing nothing at all? Well, I sort of figured maybe the excitement would come to me. How's that, Roy? It could be that the outlaw Jonah captured uh, lied to us. While everybody's away, Doug Manson and the gang plan to raid the jail and set Marie free. Oh, shucks, they wouldn't do a thing like that right after a holdup. Come on, reach for it. Uh, uh, Doug Manson, Manson, said, Doug Manson and his gang. Oh, even General Rowe made mistakes. Where's the keys to those cells? You're not getting those keys. Oh. Oh. Roy lunges at the outlaw. Instantly, the gang plunges into the room. Swarms over Roy, Taylor, and Jonah. 
They fight with chairs, clubs, the butts of their guns. Jonah goes down. Gail is trying to fight her way to Roy's side. She's pushed away, knocked to the floor. Roy is alone now, fighting not only to beat the gang, but to take revenge for what they've done to Dale and Jonah. They move in on him. He hasn't a chance. There are too many of them. Roy is staggering. He falls unconscious. I set Marie free, Doug. But Bill Palmer isn't there. Not there? We checked every cell. They hid him somewhere else. This hombre will know where Bill is. Rogers, you mean? Take him along. Him and his two partners. We're not leaving Bill down. Rogers may never have done any talking before, but he will this time. We'll use our system on him, and he'll be glad to tell where Bill is. Say, have you tried wonderful new Post Sugar Crisp yet? You know, Post Sugar Crisp is the exciting new cereal treat that's been making friends just as fast as it's sold. And no wonder, it's a real round-the-clock favorite. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Pour it into your biggest breakfast bowls with milk or cream for a delicious cereal treat. No sugar to add. It's already sweet. If it's a between-meal snack you want, Post Sugar Crisp will really hit the spot then, too. And you'll find it extra fun to eat as is, just like candy. Mom will be mighty happy to serve it any time, too because it's so good for you. Wholesome wheat for nourishment. The sugar and honey coating for quick energy. Make sure you get a couple of packages right away. One is never enough. Remember, post sugar crisp in the giant or regular size red, white, and blue package with the three little bears on the front. Sugar crisp, one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. During the short time since Doug Manson's gang rescued him from the courtroom, they have committed a robbery, shot a man who testified against Doug, and sworn to kill all the other witnesses who had appeared. Then, while the sheriff was away trying to locate its headquarters, the gang raided the jail, overpowering Roy, Dale, and Jonah. They freed Manson's girlfriend, but couldn't find Bill Palmer. Manson has taken Roy, Dale, and Jonah to his real headquarters, determined to make Roy tell where Palmer has been hidden. You may as well quit trying, Manson. You know where they're holding Bill Palmer, Rogers, and you're going to tell me. We're not telling you anything. Yeah, say, I got captured by the Iroquois Indians during the Battle of Crowfoot Canyon, and even they couldn't make me talk. Of course, my mouth was stuffed with feathers at the time, but just the same, I wouldn't... Nicholas, you and a couple of the boys take the girl in the other room. Now, hold on there. I Sit won't down, talk, Rogers. Roy. Don't start another fight. I'm still top dog here. I've got my boys to back me up. Start walking, miss, into that other room. I'll be all right, Roy. Manson, if anything happens to Dale, you'll meet with more trouble than you ever dreamed of. Suppose we get on to business, Rogers. Did you hear what I said, Manson? If anything happens to Dale, I'll... What happens to her is up to you. Where did you put Bill Palmer? I answered that once. You said you wouldn't tell. I still say the same thing. I think you'll change your mind. Okay, Nicholas, Rogers needs some persuasion. Always glad to oblige, Mr. Rogers. If anything happens to Dale... <laughs> Manson, I'll kill you! Sit down, Rogers. Get back in that chair. Come on, you fellas, pitch in here. Yo, if I'd have just brought my saber. Put him back. Yeah, that's it. Now, sit there. Our chance will come yet, Roy. You bet it will. Rogers, where did you put Bill Palmer? Why don't you ride out and look for him? That might be quicker. Nicholas, he still doesn't want to talk. That's okay with us. Hold him in his chair, boys. How about it, Rogers? Are you going to tell us where Palmer is? Look in the hayloft delivery stable in Mineral City. Thanks. Now bring Dale back here. I want to see her. Sure. He talked, Nicholas. Bring the girl back in. Oh, sure. Now, Roy, don't you be blaming yourself. If you hadn't talked when you did, I would have. Everything's okay, eh, Doug? You all right, Dale? Oh, I'm sorry I screamed, Roy. I didn't mean to. I, I tried to hold back. Forget it. Now you men tie these three in their chairs, hands and feet. Put an extra rope around their chest and back of the chair. Is uh, Bill where we can get him? Yeah. I'll take the boys and get Bill. 
You stick here and watch over these three. Why bother with them? Because Rogers may have told us wrong. If he did, I want to be sure he's around when we ride back. Manson and the gang leave. Roy, Dale, and Jonah are alone in the house with Pete Nicholas. The sun sinks below the horizon. Darkness comes to Paradise Valley. Nicholas lights the oil lamp on the table, then goes into the kitchen to prepare supper for himself. He feels secure. His prisoners are well bound. There is no chance of their escaping. Oh, if only I hadn't screamed. If I could just have held... It's better this way, Dale. Oh, shucks, ain't going to find Bill Power anyhow. Roy didn't tell him the right place. I didn't tell him any place at all. I merely suggested they look in the livery stable at Mineral City. It sure reminds me of the time General Rowe went from Portland to Minneapolis. If we could figure Houston. a way of signaling the sheriff, we'd clean this thing up in a hurry. This is the gang's real headquarters, and we know they're coming back. Yeah, but it'd be pretty hard to signal now, even if we weren't tied up. It's night. Well, a light would do it. Fire. Say, that oil lamp, it's lit and made of glass. If we could break the lamp... Sit quiet, Dale, Jonah. I'll try to work my chair over to the table. Roy's legs are bound to the chair legs, his arms and chest to the back of the chair, but he can move his feet slightly. He can walk the chair a little at a time. He starts moving toward the table, the oil lamp, as quietly as possible, lest Peter Nicholas hear. Maintaining a balance while tied to the chair is difficult. To fall would mean disaster. Roy is almost at the table now. A little more. There. Be careful, Roy. Convolutions. Roy lunges in the chair, thrusting his head forward, hitting the lamp and knocking it across the table into the floor. The lamp breaks. The oil spreads out. The flames lick at it greedily. The room is on fire. Fire! Fire! Hey, Nicholas, get in here. The house is on fire, Nicholas. Hurry! Don't try any stunts, Rich. Hey, there is a fire. Come on, Nicholas, cut us loose. Yeah, push your eyeballs back in there, eye sockets, and do something. The house is burning down. You won't be able to put it out alone, Nicholas. You'll need help, so cut us loose. Nicholas pulls a knife from his belt, steps to Roy's chair, begins cutting the cords that bind Roy. Come on, hurry. Those flames are spreading fast. I'm working as fast as I can. Everything Doug owns will burn if... Roy there. is free. He springs from his chair at Nicholas, hitting him hard on the jaw. A single blow, a knockout blow. Roy grabs the outlaw's knife, cuts Dale and Jonah free. A lightning stroke, Roy. Jonah, tie some rope around this rattler and drag him out of here. You betcha. I'll grab some blankets and start smothering these flames. I thought the flames were to signal the sheriff, Roy. As long as we're free, Dale, we won't need to signal him. Well, here, give me a blanket and I'll help you. No, I've got another job for you. See if you can locate the posse. All right. Bring them up the main trail. Don't use the back trail or you might run into Manson and his gang. On their way back, you mean? Yeah. It'll be easier to get them after they're off their horses and in the house. Oh, one thing more. Stop the posse at the halfway point. Hold them there until you hear two shots. That'll mean Manson's home and to come on. Got it. When you get there, you'd better fire two shots, too, so that I know you're on hand and ready for action. As soon as the fire has been put out... Roy and Jonah remove all the guns and ammunition from the house. They find a hammer and nails, nail the wooden shutters on the windows close. They nail the back door. Now there is but one way to get in or out of the house, the front door. The front door is a trap that can be guarded by one or two men. Roy and Jonah go outside to await the arrival of the gang. Oh, I smell smokier than I did the time the Indians used me to send up signals. The Indians used you to what? Well, there wasn't nothing to build a fire with, you see. And I was their prisoner, so they sprinkled me with water first, then they lit me, and you... Hey, that's Dale. She and the posse are at the halfway point. Well, now all we got to do is just sit here and wait for the outlaws to come. That's when the real excitement will start, Jonah. <laughs> Manson's with the gang, all right. Yeah. A good sharpshooter could get him right from here. Uh, I'm a sharpshooter, Roy. Not yet, Jonah. Some of the gang might get away if we made a move now. Wait until they're in the house. Then I'll signal for the posse. If you're a chief rain in the face in the morning, 
Get off the warpath with a breakfast built around new, improved Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Post Toasties are crisp, fresh, packed with the rich, sweet kernel flavor of corn. The cereal, it's a hit with both big Indians and little Indians. Post Toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good cornflakes, Post Toasties, heap good cornflakes. So put a feather in your cap, Mom, by making sure your early morning hunters find a heap of Post Toasties in their breakfast bowls. Talk about corn-flavored freshness that'll make them whoop for more. Say, you're talking about Post Toasties, the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. Post Toasties, one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. What's happening here? There's been a fire. We'll have trouble holding them inside from now on, Jonah. Signal the posse. You betcha. You're covered, Manson. Better come on out. So you're loose, are you, Rogers? Start shooting, Jonah. Make them think there's a lot of us. There is a lot of us. You and me. How about it? How about it, Manson? Have you changed your mind? The whole place is blockaded, boys. The back door, the window, and everything. You're right on the dot, Deal. The gang's in the house, men. Our job is to blast them out, so let's do it. Hold it! Don't shoot, we're coming out. Hold your fire, men. But keep your guns ready. The outlaws, sullen now and frightened, file through the open door into the moonlight, dropping their guns as they come. The posse takes over quickly, right. efficiently. Where's Manson? Doug Manson hasn't come out yet. All right, Manson. We're not going to wait for you. Come on and get me. Let me see you try to walk through that door. Let me take your saddle gun, Dale. Sure. Here, Roy. He's got another lamp lit in the back room. We'll just start another little fire. Hey! That did it, Roy. Yeah, yeah. Look at them flames spread in there. (laughs) They ought to cook his goose. If he had a goose, I mean. Manson's trying to put out the fire, Roy. Get back there, Manson. You can't do this, Rogers. Keep back on your own side of the room. Away from those flames. You can't let me burn. Then start talking. Manson hesitates a moment, then goes back to the far side of the room. He cannot be seen from the outside now. He's unnerved, frantic. Roy and the others hear pounding coming from inside the cabin. Now I can take him. Roy turns toward the house and without hesitation steps through the doorway. Manson. No, you don't. This is for what you did to Dale. You rattler. I wish there was time to give you more. All right, you men, come and get him. And we've got these flames to look after, too. Roy, I think you ought to pat Jonah on the back a little after all he did today. Yeah, I think so, too. I guess he's in his room. Jonah, come here, will you? He worked mighty hard, Roy. You want something, Roy? Yeah, I, uh, well, uh, what's all this? Oh, just trying on my old uniform, see if it'd fit. No, I, I mean those, uh, those things on your chest. Let's see them, Jonah. You didn't tell me you had all those medals. Oh, I didn't, huh? Well, what are they for? Well, <clears throat> uh, this is for just plain heroism. This is for gallantry, and this one here belonged to my captain, but he <laughs> left it pinned to his shirt one day when he gave me his clothes to wash. <laughs> and this is for bravery beyond the call of duty. But this one here, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, that's a private medal General Thomas Kenneth Rowe gave me for shooting a sheep. A sheep? Yeah, yeah. You see, one day, General Rowe got word that some bigwigs from Washington was going to inspect our post. Well, sir, 
The general couldn't keep Slick Top Sue from, oh my gracious, can't say that anymore hardly, <laughs> couldn't keep Slick Top Sue from hanging around. And naturally, he didn't want the big moguls to see her, not with her head bare the way it was. Oh, naturally. <laughs> yeah, naturally. So the general left everything up to me. And mm -hmm. I went out and shot a sheep, then took the hide, cut it to shape, and glued it, woolly side out, on slick top, slick top. Oh, there, boy. Well, to make a long story short, the results was amazing. I say the results was amazing. Them Washington moguls got smitten head over heels by slick top. Mm -hmm. The woolly effect was uh, very fetching, you see. Mm. And they invited her to come to Washington. Said they'd give her a big job. So she accepted, and they did, and we never heard of her again. Which made General Rowe very happy. Happy enough to pin a special medal on Jonah. Dale, what I ought to do instead of patting this fellow on the back is to give him the side of my boot, and I think I will. Come out tonight, come out tonight, come out tonight. Alabama gal, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? I got a little gal, she's got a wooden leg, got a wooden leg, got a wooden leg. I guess that's the reason why they call her Peg. Tell me, ain't you coming out tonight? Alabama gal, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Alabama gal, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? Alabama gal, won't you come out tonight? Ask her if she'd be my wife, be my wife, be my wife, and I'd be happy all my life if she would marry me. Yes, sir, I will be your wife, be your wife, be your wife. Yes, sir, I will be your wife if you'd be true to me. Alabama girl, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Alabama girl, won't you come out tonight? Ain't you, won't you, shan't you, can't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Ain't you, won't you, shan't you, can't you come out tonight and dance for the light of the moon? Yes, mister, that's a twister. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Yes, mister, that's a twister. You're all right. I'll dance by the light of the moon. All of them girl, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. All of them girl, won't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. And dance by the light of the moon. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Leo Curley, Pat McGeehan, and Jess Kirkpatrick. This is Art Ballinger speaking for... P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on Who cares?
whispers about the clouds if we're together. Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet. 